we're there to help you guys. In California, they're serious about making sure their lottery retailers are honest and have mounted an unprecedented investigation of store owners and ticket sellers. He's safe. Pat's going to give a safety briefing. And he's going to give out the ops. Bill Hertog is head of the lottery's security enforcement division. He says if a person who sells lottery tickets is winning big, there are just a couple of explanations. Plays a lot or somehow scammed it. Hertog and his team of investigators wanted to find out what was going on. People are winning a lot. I don't think they're playing that much. It's, it warrants another look. Something suspicious was going on. Right. So the mission now is to send undercover lottery investigators into the field. And they're going to let us observe. But before we do, you need to know a little bit more about lottery games. No matter what state you play in, there are basically two types of games. First, there are the online games like Powerball or Mega Millions, called online because it's run via the lottery's computer. Remember, that's the kind of game Bob Sehested was playing. But for their investigation, the California Lottery will be using so-called scratch-off tickets. You buy a playing card for anything from a dollar to twenty dollars. Scratch off the lucky words or numbers, and you can win lots of money. As we said, you can scan your ticket and find out if you've won or lost. In some states, it even tells you how much you've won. But in many places, you need to ask the clerk behind the counter to scan the tickets for you by using the lottery computer. Here's how the undercover investigation in California will work. The investigator will enter a store wearing a hidden camera and pretend to be an ordinary customer with a few of those scratch-offs. He'll ask the clerk behind the counter to check the tickets for him to see if any of them are winners. Can you check those while I'm looking for stuff? Is this a realistic scenario? I mean, to come in with a ticket and say, hey, scan it for me, let me know if it's a winner. Yes, very real. People realistic. do this all the time. All the time. For the majority of the public since the inception of the, the lottery had to rely on the retailer and the clerk behind the counter. What the clerk won't know is that one of the tickets is a guaranteed $1,000 winner. It's actually a special scratch-off ticket that the lottery investigators have manufactured just for this investigation. The investigator will play dumb, sometimes pretending that he doesn't play the lottery or that the tickets belong to someone else. I don't know why my girlfriend keeps playing those things. She never wins. Then he'll go off and shop in the store. There's a reason for that. He'll give the clerk a chance to be alone while she electronically scans the tickets. When she scans the winner, it will show up as a winner on the video screen, and the machine will automatically print a receipt confirming it. And that will be the moment of truth. And that's their opportunity to do the right thing represent the lottery in the proper way. At this store in Santa Clara County, good news. These clerks do the right thing. That's a what? $1,000. My girlfriend's going to be happy today. Because the ticket is a large win, the clerk correctly explains that in order to claim the money, he has to take the winning ticket to a district lottery office or mail the ticket in along with a claim form. And you'll attach it all here. Oh, okay. Again, this woman not only did her job, she added some solid advice. And I do recommend sending it certified mail. Oh, okay. Everything is by the book. But some ticket sellers don't always play by the book. Investigators are beginning to see irregularities that could explain why some of those retailers end up cashing so many winning tickets. It's called discounting. California Lottery Director Joan Baruki. Discounting is uh, when a retailer or a clerk will offer to buy someone's winning ticket from them for a reduced amount. And then uh, the retailer or the clerk will then uh, submit it as a claim for themselves. Why would someone sell a winning ticket to a retailer for less than it's worth? Simple. They may want to hide their winnings. Let's say a person has a $1,000 winning ticket. Normally, they'd have to take it to the lottery to get their money. But if they owe back taxes, court fees, or child support, the state will automatically deduct it from their winnings. So in order to avoid those payments, some people try to strike a deal. A retailer will sometimes offer to buy the ticket at a discount let's say $650 cash for that $1,000 winning ticket. The customer gets cash in the clear, and the retailer makes a profit. But lottery officials point out discounting hurts everyone. And that's a loss 
to the state, that's a loss to the victim, it's a loss to the mother and child that's owed the back child support. I don't think these are winners, but if you could check them for me, please. At this store in Santa Clara, California, discounting is what this retailer is suggesting when an undercover lottery investigator hands him a winning ticket to check. He does reveal that it's a winner. I'm sorry? This is too big. How much is it? Thousand. You're kidding. That's good. Thousand dollars? Thousand dollars. But the investigator pretends it might be bothersome to claim the prize money according to the rules, which would mean mailing in the ticket or taking it to a lottery office to cash it. Is that the only way to get paid is to go through the lottery? Not the only way. That's when the retailer offers to buy it at a discount. Or you can read the sale it. Sell it. Sell it for a lot less. The clerk agrees to buy the $1,000 ticket for cash. You're going to be $650. Okay, so it's 1000 and you're going to be 650 for it, so I don't have to pay my, my black court fees. Does, doesn't the lottery take that stuff out of the checks? If you have, like, black child support, they do. Okay. She agrees and takes the money. Four, five, six, fifteen. Hey, thanks a lot. All right. I appreciate it. Later, we come back and show the owner, Vin Nguyen, the undercover video. This is your store. Okay, I'll take 650 so I don't have to pay my court fees. Well, you saw the tape, right? Yeah, I saw it. Okay, so now we know. Yeah, but, you know, we sometimes we have customers here and then we try to help them out. They need some money quickly, you know, in urgent. So we make a convenience for customer. But, but that convenience I, is against the I rules, which may be why his wife ended up cashing the ticket and telling lottery officials she was the real winner. Here's the question, though. Later, when your wife tried to claim the $1,000, mm-hmm. she told authorities that she actually purchased that ticket. Right. Which isn't what happened, is it? Actually, here, we, we're done here, and I have no more comments. As we said, though he did nothing illegal, discounting is against lottery rules. And breaking those rules was costly to Mr. Noen. The lottery canceled his contract to sell lottery tickets. But the undercover investigators in California aren't just looking for retailers who discount. They're looking for retailers who steal. We're now in Riverside, California. Over the next two days, undercover investigators will visit 50 stores. Yeah. Most clerks and store owners will do everything correctly. There, yeah, one thousand dollar here. You're kidding. You win one thousand dollars. But watch what happens in this store. We go in with our own hidden camera and record this female investigator as she comes in. We've obscured her face because she's working undercover. At first, she goes off and pretends to shop. Then she comes back to the counter with her tickets. I don't think these are winners, but you can check them for me, please. Thanks. Then she goes off and shops again. Watch the clerk. You can see as he scratches off the tickets and scans them. Remember, the lottery machine prints out a receipt and flashes on the monitor when the $1,000 winner is scanned. But when the undercover investigator comes back... Son of a All right. Have a good day. He tells her none of the tickets are winners, but keeps them all, including the winner. Bill Hertog is monitoring his investigator from his car just outside the store. She got ripped. So now we'll send in a backup ID. Backup's going to be to get another ID, make sure we get two videos on the suspect. The second investigator will buy an online lottery ticket from the same clerk to further document the date and time of the alleged theft. Lotto investigators move on to this quickie market. Can you check these for me? They're my friends. I don't think they're winners. So you can just check them for me. When the investigator comes back to the counter a few minutes later... Any of those winners? No? All right. I never... Does anybody ever win on those things? No. So, sometimes? Remember, one of those tickets is worth $1,000. Next stop a liquor store that also sells lottery tickets. Would the clerk tell the investigator she has a winner? No, none of them. All right, have a good day. Thanks, bye. How about this clerk at a gas station? Will she identify that ticket as a winner? None of them. All right, have a good day. Thanks. What about this clerk at a cigarette store? No winners. Thanks. Have a good day.
Over the course of two days, seven store owners or clerks don't tell the undercover investigators about the winning tickets. We go from operation, now we go to making a case. So far, not telling the investigator about the winning ticket could simply be an honest mistake. The real question is, will any of the clerks who kept those tickets try to cash them in? I'm a reporter with Dateline NBC. If they do, they'll have some explaining to do. Why would you tell somebody that a ticket was not a winner when it really was a winner? 